Okay, so previously we've drawn the graphs of y equals sine x over x and y equals sine x over x all squared, and that's that one there, and y squared equals sine x over x. And there you are, that one looks like the, you know, sort of blobs every so often, and it doesn't exist in the regions where sine x over x is negative. And I finished the last uh, video by saying that if I wanted to complicate this even further, I might ask people, I might ask applicants, what the gradient of the line is as uh, y squared equals sine x over x crosses the, the uh, x-axis. So it crosses here and also here, here and here. Um, and it looks as though it crosses at kind of an infinite gradient or sort of straight down. Okay, but how could we show that? And the technique uses something called implicit differentiation. So if I scroll across, I, we can see that we drew the graph effectively correctly. So uh, it doesn't look exactly the same, but uh, it's close enough. Um, it's just a sketch. They don't expect you to know everything. And uh, I am assuming that this, this was supposed to be drawn um, symmetrical. I did my best, um, so, so that's fine. Okay, so if we move to a new page, we know we're trying to find the gradient of y squared equals sine x over x. And we're looking for this at x equals um, n pi, because that's the point where it crosses the, um, the x-axis. That's the point where y equals 0. Um, for n not 0, for n not equal to 0, and I guess n included in the integers. There we are. So how would you go about differentiating something like this? You actually have to use a technique called implicit differentiation, um, and that requires you to differentiate one side and then differentiate the other side, but both with respect to x, although when you differentiate y with respect to x, you need to be very careful. So let's just assume that we do the differential of sine x over x, because in fact, you can show that for any y squared equals some function of x graph, as whenever y is zero, the gradient will also be zero. So I'll show you what I mean by that. Um, let's just say that we differentiated this. Uh, we did differentiate it in a previous video. Um, so if you wanna know what that expression would look like, you can look it up. But when we differentiate y squared, well, we can't differentiate that with respect to x because we don't know really what the function uh, y would look like if we differentiated it. And there is no x here to differentiate with respect to. So in fact, what we've got to do is we've got to first differentiate it with respect to y, and then we can multiply by uh, dy dx. So this is just really a continuation of the chain rule. So in the chain rule, you often say something like this, dy dx is equal to some du dx uh, multiplied by dy du. Okay, so mathematicians might not like this, but really you can treat these differentials like fractions and say that the du on the top cancels with the du on the bottom, and so both sides are equivalent. In fact, what we're saying here is something else. We're saying maybe we've got some function of y, okay? We want to differentiate that with respect to x, d dx of some function of y, but we can't really do that straight away, so why don't we differentiate this with respect to y? Okay, that's possible. And then multiply it by, by dy dx. And in the, same, in the same way as previously here in the chain rule, the dy cancels with the dy on the bottom, and you are just doing d dx of um, f of y. Okay, so that's the technique we're gonna use here. So when we differentiate y squared with respect to y, we get two y, and we need to multiply that by dy dx, by dy dx. Okay, 
So we can get an expression for dy dx in terms of the differential of sine x over x and uh, 2y. So let's write that down. dy dx is just going to be equal to 1 over 2y multiplied by this differential here. Okay, so I think that's equal to something like x cos x um, minus sine x over x squared, but it doesn't really matter. The only case where you might want to be um, sort of careful about this is if this function was actually equal to zero as well. So if this part of the function was equal to zero, then you've got zero divided by zero. And as we saw in the, in the very first um, video in this series, you can't do zero divided by zero. So why does this mean that the gradient will be kind of infinite at any point where y is zero? Well, y is on the bottom here. So it's going to pass kind of vertically through the x-axis at any point um, where the gradient, where the uh, function passes through the, the x-axis. So because y is zero at that point, your gradient is going to be some one divided by zero or some function divided by zero. And provided that function is not um, is not zero itself, so in this case it would be one half x cos x minus sine x over x squared. As long as that isn't zero itself, then we can say the gradient is kind of infinite, or it tends to infinity, and so we've got a we've got a straight line um, that goes straight upwards. Okay, great. So this is a technique that you know you might use quite a lot in interview these implicit differentials and it's common for an a interview question to ask you to prove something that you already know so for instance most as a level students know that if y equals the natural logarithm of x then dy dx is equal to 1 over x but you can actually prove this using implicit differentiation. And usually the way that this goes is you want to get x on its own and then differentiate with respect to x and implicitly differentiate on the other side. Um, and then rearrange to find dy dx and, and substitute back in some, some x for y at the end. So I'll show you, I'll show you what I mean. I'll show you what we mean by, uh, by that in this question. If we do, uh, if we reverse this this natural logarithm of x, we can put everything to the power of e. So we can say e to the power of y is now equal to x. If we differentiate on both sides, if we do d dx on this side and d dx on this side, then on the right hand side we just get one, but on the left hand side we have to implicitly differentiate. So we can say that this is equivalent to dy dx multiplied by the differential with respect to y of e to the y. Okay, so you should know that the differential of e to the y is just e to the y. Okay, so the function uh, e to the x, if you differentiate that, is just e to the x. It's the one function that the value of y gives the gradient at each point. So if we then uh, rearrange this to give dy dx equals 1 over e to the y, okay, because this part is just e to the y, then we can see from our earlier step, I've kind of differentiated it on both sides here, but we said that e to the y is just equal to x. So in fact, we can say that dy dx is just 1 over x. And that's what we wanted to prove. Okay, great.